From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and we're digging in with the VMware Cloud on AWS update, of course, uh, an, an important solution set we've been talking about for a couple of years. Uh, if you see, we, we've done uh, interviews with some of the VMware and AWS executives. We did a deep dive on some of the technology, and now we get to dig in with one of the users of the technology. Of course, the executives talk about the proof of how many customers have been using it. So happy to welcome to the program. I have two guests from PLM Insurance. Uh, first, uh, sitting right next to me on the screen is BJ Gardner, who's the lead system architect. Next to him is Dave Ziegenfoss, who is a senior systems architect. BJ and Dave, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. All right, so BJ, uh, just, just for audience that does not know Pennsylvania, Lumberman's Mutual Insurance Company. Give us a little bit about you know, the company, 125 years in history, obviously with the name, it's in the insurance uh, business, but help, help us understand you know, what your business is and uh, what, what you and Dave uh, do for the organization. Sure, so Pennsylvania Lumberman's has been around for 125 years. We just celebrated uh, the 125th year, um, this, this February actually. Uh, we are a commercial insurance company, uh, property casualty. Um, and we specialize in the wood niche. So we, we, you know, we cover everything from you know, lumber yards to auto fleets that have anything to do with moving wood, selling wood. Um, so we're pretty niche, we're pretty specific in our, in our brand um, and we're a mutual insurer. Um, we're one of the few, if, if not only uh, one left that does lumber insurance uh, on, in the mutual space, so. All right, and BJ, give us a, a little bit of snapshot uh, from, from an IT standpoint. Uh, obviously, you're using VMware because uh, you're here. That, uh, talk to us about you know, what data centers and cloud usage looks like uh, for, for PLM. So I've been with uh, Pennsylvania Lumbermans for about 15 years, and we were operating in uh, full on-prem with bare metal servers. Um, in 2007, 2008, we started with the VMware product, uh, product set. Uh, and since then, we've been moving little by little to the cloud. We have uh, many of many many of our core applications are sitting with vendors uh, in, in the cloud as you know, as of right now. We have a small data center in Philadelphia that is an on-prem, uh, and then we have, which we'll talk about, uh, we have a cloud uh, data center as a service model with a uh, VMware certified cloud partner uh, called Faction, um, and then we also now have our disaster recovery uh, as. Uh, as, as a cloud product. Excellent, since we're, we're talking about the, the VMware cloud on AWS, bring in, inside a little bit, uh, you know, that, that DR use case that you're using, that, that hybrid model, you know, help, help tease that out. BJ, we'll start with you, and I'm sure, you know, Dave will have some color to, to give after you share. Sure, I mean, you know, when you're talking about disaster recovery in general, uh, the need to maintain business con continuity uh, while keeping a lean IT staff uh, and with it, with with no extended downtime and data loss, it, it's just it, it's not an option. It, it's um, you, you can't afford to be down. You can't afford to lose data. Um, so having a cloud service now for disaster recovery, or at least the concept of that, helps a small IT shop uh, in the way of resources um, that we just don't have on on hand on staff. So um, you know that's that's pretty much the biggest goal for us is to maintain business continuity and um, you know, with, with our lean staff at the same time. And echoing uh, BJ a bit, um, having an on-prem solution, you know, really to BJ's point about our lean staff, it, it made things uh, quite cumbersome for us with uh, maintaining backups, replications and, and such. Uh, there was a lot involved. It was very time consuming. So the, uh, the handoff, uh, to, to utilizing VMware Cloud for our disaster purposes really really helped uh, benefit our team as a whole. All right, you, you mentioned uh, you, your your partner on this solution is Faction. You know, help us understand you know how you made the decision to, to to go down this path. So I can give you a quick a quick rundown here of how Faction came to be. So uh, we're located our our um, corporate is in Philadelphia, PA. Um, we occupied two floors in an office building. Um, our data center was on was was on the one floor. We were consolidating, and um, we moved up to just one one single floor. So we basically lost the footprint of the data center. Um, so I went out hunting for 
uh, you know, a co-location type vendor um, and hooked up with Faction. And um, yeah, so we've been with Faction for uh, since 2015. Uh, we've had their, uh, I'll call it kind of colo plus uh, data centers a service model, um, you know, since then, since 2015. And we've we've been with them doing different different initiatives here and there over the years, and disaster recovery as a service is is now one of them. Great, Dave. Uh, you you uh, maybe supply a little more color on that piece. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, the the use of VMware Cloud with um, Site Recovery Manager um, again from a technical standpoint. Um, it, it was second to none as far as as far as the uh, flexibility it gave us uh, to grow our workloads to to maintain them. Um, recovery point objective was what really sold me. Uh, it allowed us to get extremely granular um, from a business continuity perspective. And uh, yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a fan. I, I just I really uh, like VMware Cloud with uh, SRM. It's uh, proven to be uh, top notch. Yeah, maybe follow up on that. Uh, you know, you, you've, you've been a VMware customer for a number of years. You know, you're familiar with the tooling and everything else like that. So, you know, how how long did a solution like this, you know, take take to roll out? So I will guess. So absolutely. Um, you know, there there was there was a good portion from from when we started. So you have to kind of put it in perspective because. Um, we had, a, we had a data center in Atlanta, Georgia, that was our disaster recovery site with Faction. So we had a two-fold project. We were going into a contract year, a renewal year, and Faction pitched the uh, AWS, a VMware and AWS service. So we were decommissioning a data center at the same time as we were rolling it out. So I'll just give you the quick timeline. So November of 2018 was basically the contract negotiations. We finalized everything kind of in February of 2019 as far as kicking off the, the call on how we're going to actually do the project. The work began around April uh, of 2019. Um, Faction went ahead and set up the AWS SDDC environment in early May. Uh, Faction builds out the environment uh, for the rest of May. Uh, June, we did some non-disruptive uh, load testing on the environment in AWS. Uh, we set up the replication recovery group build out. Uh, throughout the summer of 2019, and then we had a full um, full sign off in uh, September, September 17th, actually, of 2019. So I'll just kind of highlight, though, in that process, that it took roughly about four months to do the full build out testing and the Atlanta data center decommissioning. Okay, and, and BJ, after having done this, uh, you know, we've now got DR as a service. You know, what what, what are the hero numbers? Have you, you, is there cost savings along this? You know, how do you report up? you know, the success or, you know, results of, of what you've done so far? Yeah, so speaking to that, so when we did the contract negotiation, negotiation sorry, in, um, in November of 2018, uh, one of the things we realized when we were pitching this, this cloud disaster, or this, um, oops, sorry, the cloud disaster recovery as a service model, um, we saw roughly about a 20% annual savings um, in moving to this cloud service. So a breakdown of what kind of the savings is, is, is pretty much in Atlanta, we have some resource costs because we're running um, basically on a solo type environment with, um, with action. And then we had a circuitry cost. So we had a point to point line that would run out uh, to actually to New Jersey and then down to Atlanta. So we had, we had that cost as well. So we saved basically where we ripped out the, the circuit, the point to point circuit, and uh, we, we got, we offloaded some resource um, costs. So, uh, like I said, about a roughly about a twenty percent uh, cost savings. All right, so so that that's some of the the, the hard figures, uh, Dave. You know, bring us inside a little bit operationally. Uh, obviously, there's got to be a little bit of change as to how you manage things. Um, you know, automation is you know a bit been hot for years, but even more so when you talk about cloud environments. So, uh, you know, how 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 has this deployment you know changed what what the workers are doing and 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 beyond that. Well, it's it simplified things quite a bit, uh, just just by um, the partnership with Faction and uh, in conjunction with VMware Cloud uh, for our disaster recovery solution. Um, it, it's offered many benefits. Um, for one, uh, we had a primary engineer who left uh, the company. Um, we, we found some benefits to not having to fill that 
that staff resource. Um, so that that was also a a positive from a money aspect. Um, but as far as a day to day, um, you know, functioning um, way of, way of go about doing things, uh, it, it really took things off my plate, off the rest of the team's plate, um, and, and just really really gave us a uh, peace of mind um, as it pertains to our, our our infrastructure and our data being secured. All right, well, I uh, wanna give you both uh, the final word, you know, what, what learnings do you have out of this? Any best practices you would share? Or there's also so, some updates coming, taking VMware being able to take advantage of the, the latest uh, bare metal offering from Amazon. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll let you choose. Maybe BJ will start with you and wrap with you, Dave, as to uh, you know the, the, those final words that you would share with your peers. Uh, yeah, I'll certainly start it off. I mean, you know, coming from my perspective uh, as kind of the, the manager of, of of the team here, um, you know, our goal as as a company, our goal as an IT shop, our goal as an operations team is to ensure the company's technology needs. Uh, will be met after you know an event of a disaster and that's that is the key um you know you want to protect itself you want to protect the data you want to protect the customers um so you know in the case for the cloud for us is maintaining business continuity while reducing physical footprint and keeping the it operations lean like i had stated before um and one of the most important things uh and this is not just about disaster recovery but establishing good partnerships with vendors um, is absolutely imperative because I don't care how big your shop is, and, and again, we're on the small side, obviously, but you can't you can't do it alone. So you need really good, strong partnerships um, and good relationships with vendors. And I would I would say uh, make sure you identify your critical business workloads. Know your environment absolutely. Um, it's imperative. Yet you have to plan efficiently. And um, by all means, test, 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 test. You can't test the solution enough. So that's really about all I have. All right, well, Dave and BJ, uh, thank you so much for, for, for joining us. Appreciate you sharing your, your, your journey along and uh, wish you the best of luck uh, with the solution going forward. Thank you, yeah, sir. Thank you. thank you for having us here. And thank you for joining us for this update, VMware Cloud on AWS. Be sure to check out thecube.net uh, for all the rest of the coverage we have, both in the VMware and AWS ecosystems, I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you as always for watching theCUBE.